Hawaii, I'm very envious. Uh, some people from Spain, hello Spain. I always enjoy visiting Spain, more people from Spain. Brazil, where I was uh, just a few months ago, uh, and so on. My name is Stephen Downs. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and I want to begin, are you able to see me very well? Like, there's a little me up in the corner there. I'm not sure how well you see the image of me, but I want to show you what I got today. I just got this, so I, I don't even know if it works yet. But uh, well, I'm, I'll show you the, the box, I guess. Uh, there we go. <laughs> so here it is. And uh, so it's still in pieces. It's still in the plastic wrapping. And it wasn't that expensive. It was like uh, $30 Canadian, $29.99. So uh, it's actually relatively inexpensive. It's got, the, it's got a little screw for a camera or a little holder for, uh, well, for something like this, which is my uh, mobile phone, and it's also my camera. It's also uh, my email client. It's also the thing that I read Facebook on and Twitter on and so on. Um, and it's kind of neat. One of the things I do with this is, uh, for example, so I'll, I'll pop it off. Oh, Dr. May Deitch has stopped live video. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that's probably better for you guys, and we'll see how that works. So, yeah, that's much better. So one of the things that I do is, you know, so... I hope I'll open this up, and there's my cat, by the way. Uh, I like this because uh, it's, you know, biometrics to turn it on. So <laughs> here's the email of Nelly telling me I have a session today. So I'll take a photograph, and so here I am taking a photograph. And uh, what I will do there, now this photograph, interestingly, uh, because it's on this phone, it will automatically upload to uh, to Dropbox. So it will go into Dropbox, and then a little while later, and now I'm going to share my screen now. So, and so, <laughs> we, we need to zip to, back into the other format. Um, because I don't have my screen sharing up. Oh, arrange video. Oh, I see. I can do it myself here. Uh, maximize. So I want to oh, unmaximize video. Live video stream. So I've stopped on stop sharing video. That's not what I wanted to do. See, your belly helped me and now I'm lost. <laughs> Restore. There we go. Ah, perfect. That's what I wanted to do. So I'm going to take my screen and I'll start sharing my screen. And this usually takes 30 to 60 seconds. Okay, well that's something that, okay, uh, now I'm sharing my screen. You may choose to minimize your desktop app, might be a wise idea. Uh, this is Audacity, by the way, and I'm doing an audio recording of what I'm talking about. So let me just pop open now. I'll pop open my Dropbox folder, and uh, we'll pop into camera uploads and it should have just come in so let me sort these by date we have to wait a little bit because the slowest element in this entire organization here is windows so come on windows come on windows silly thing so i can't do anything until windows decides that it's finished okay so let's get the date here so here we go, 2103. Let's open this up. We'll have a look at it. So there it is. It's not very good, right? Uh, usually I, I take better photos than that, but this was in a bit of a rush. So what I'll do now is I'll take this photo. Um, I'm going to send it to Flickr. So that's going to open it up in Flickr. And so I'll give it a title. Uh, what will I give it? A spring. 
I was vlogging springtime. Uh, springtime uh, stuff. So the really important thing I'm going to be putting here is 2015365. And, uh, so, uh, so what's the date today? March 21st, 2015. Here I am presenting to, I forget the name of the conference, something about blogging spring. Sorry, no. <laughs> no, I shouldn't forget the name of the conference, but okay. So, so I'll, I'll upload that. And so what's going to happen now, it's going to take a few seconds, so we're, we're going to come back to this. Um, so what's going to happen, well, what happens immediately, of course, is that it goes to Flickr. So let's go to Flickr. And Flickr should pop up on my screen here any second now. So here I am in Flickr, and I'm saving it. Let's save it. It's really a pretty bad picture. So here are some other pictures I've taken. That's a bad picture, but it's a, it's a real picture, right? So I guess that's kind of what counts. So there's the tag, which is nice. And I'm asking a couple of groups. And I'm getting some. I'm getting some. Um, and, uh, so I'm going to stop sharing this. I'm really getting some bad echo from someone. Oh. So if you're uh, on the mic, if you're uh, on the mic. So, uh, so I'm going to come back to that in just a couple of moments. What I want to talk about now, when I talk about a blogger's springtime, is to refute this idea. Refute this idea that blogging is dead. Yeah. And I don't think I should have to refute the, that idea. I, I think that it's probably clearly obvious that blogging is not dead. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a blog press at all, would there? Uh, but, you know, I mean, this is the age of YouTube, this is the age of social media, of Twitter, and all of that. You know, and sometimes I, I get the feeling that people think that all the really important conversations happen on social media, but I think that we're seeing something different happening on the internet overall. A lot of the attention is being drawn to social networking because, you know, if you think about it, a person's social network is almost like their website these days, right? And people, you know, they don't think of it that way, of course. But if you think about it from that perspective, a person will have a Facebook page or they'll have a Twitter page or whatever. They have this online web presence. And so their Twitter page is like their web page, etc. Um, is someone raising their hand? If so, I can't really tell. Oh, Art Goldberg has raised hand. Art, would you like to speak? Or were you just raising your hand? And I don't know. There doesn't seem to be an audio or video device installed for Art. So I don't think Art can speak even if he wants to. So doesn't look like it. Uh, still no sound after moving and entering. You'll just have to watch the video. I'm really sorry about that, Art. I feel for you. I really do. Um, although you're not going to hear me feeling for you until later. So I'm sorry. Um, okay, so so that's the web presence. And because that's the web presence, that's the thing that they focus on the most, right? So let's go back. Should be done by now. So we'll go back and start my screen sharing. You cannot pause, resume recording while sharing screen. Okay. I really don't like those orange boxes or orange red boxes. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen. This should have worked by now. Like I say, usually takes a few seconds. So let's go to Twitter. And we'll go to my home in Twitter. And oops. Oh, uh, Twitter has been spamming us recently. So, way too much. I thought they saw it on there. 
No, maybe not. Okay, it's not in yet. So, see, what I'm waiting for is this to happen. Uh, this is a site called IFTTT, and my IFTTT has been set up to run recipes, and one of the recipes I have is, uh, let's see if I can't find it, um, if Twitter, or sorry, if uh, Flickr, then blog, I mean, oh, here we go, if blog, then Twitter, oh, um, and if Twitter, where's that, it should be down here somewhere, uh, if Twitter then Facebook. So let's look at one of the blogs that I have. It's called Let's Make Some Art, damn it. And so it hasn't hit yet. You see, and therein lies my problem. So let's maybe I can speed things up by triggering it. So because there should be a new post on Flickr. So let's just check the recipe. And, and you see it, it's tagged 2015365, right? 2015365. So that should. There we go. So now this is my blog, right? Uh, and then this is the photo you just saw me take, and now it's on my blog, and it's appeared automatically from uh, face or from Facebook from Flickr. Now it's not going to take a whole lot of time now, and let's it might even be there already. It should show up. No, not yet. It's going to show up here on Twitter. And I'm not going to, well, see, it's now if blog, then Twitter. So let's fire this one off. I don't usually do this manually. This all happens automatically. But, uh, you know, I'm in the middle of a presentation here, and I don't want to wait because you know, I'm impatient. So there we go. So now it has shown up on Twitter, and it's also going to show up on my Facebook page. This is what I do, uh, and this is what blogging has become. All right, let's stop sharing the screen, stop screen share, uh, slow down with the screen sharing, please, it's blurry too fast. Okay, uh, sorry, I got it, internet speeds. Um, anyhow, I'm back on the, uh, on the website. So, I wanted you to see that, to go slowly as I scroll, okay? Um, so I wanted you to see that, because I wanted you to see the context in which I work and in which I make these remarks. So, here's the proposition, and I think it's a proposition that I can defend really easily. We are right now, as I speak, in a golden age of content. Totally a golden age of content. Uh, and I think this applies no matter who you are, no matter where in the world you are, what counts as a golden age may, may be changing or may be different for different people in different places. Clearly, uh, it's, it's going to be different in Nigeria than it is in Spain, than it is in Hawaii, than it is in Moncton. But nonetheless, no matter where you are, it's a golden age of content. There's a few, a few things that characterize that golden age. First of all, uh, is the idea that content now comes to us. It may be too much content comes to us. But, but the point is, it needs to be really difficult to get content. I mean, other than your radio or your television, you really had to go searching for content. You had to go to a library, you had to go buy a newspaper, go buy a magazine, and if it wasn't in any of those sources, 
you were pretty much stuck. Um, a lot of content simply did not exist. Um, and a lot more content, if it existed at all, it was in a records hall somewhere or in a private collection or whatever. We have today unparalleled distribution mechanisms. There are so many ways to access content now. Um, in this room, I have a TV over there. I have my computer here. Um, I have my phone, which I appear to have lost. Oh, there it is on my phone. And I have an iPad here, and that's just me. I haven't even counted Andrea's stuff. Um, and this is not unusual. Uh, now, it may be some people don't have all of these. Uh, some people might only have a phone, or they might only have an iPad. But the point is, we don't have to have everybody having the same device anymore. We can get content on devices that are useful to us uh, you know and this is only going to increase uh, we can get content now in our cars we can get content now in our appliances we can get you know we see content on the street we're, we're flooded with content as well the content has become much more on demand uh, the reference here is to Netflix and Hulu, and if you go look at the article, you'll see that they talk about things like BitTorrent. Um, again, it used to be the only way you, you could see video at all was on the television if they decided to show it to you, or the movie theater if they decided to show it to you, and if you felt like paying them movie theater rates. Now, we can get content, uh, well, as I say, on demand. I have Netflix. I won't show you the Netflix. <laughs> There's no way the system will keep up with it. But I have Netflix, um, and I watch, uh, well, I watch movies. I watch television dramas. I'm watching one right now called Spartacus, which will never, ever, ever air on public television. Uh, it is just not going to air. Now they ask me, do you have time to watch movies? And my answer is, yes I do. And you know why I have time to watch movies? Because I don't have to get dressed up, get into the car, go to the movie theater, buy a ticket, buy popcorn, go sit down and then reverse all of that anymore. I still watch movies. Generally I'll watch movies or TV or something like that on my Netflix for about an hour each night before I go to sleep. Why? Because it's nice. I enjoy it. Um, you know, it's it's a way to unwind. This is, as some people say, TV's new golden age. It's a new golden age because the individuation of content delivery allows for content that we could never have before. I just mentioned Spartacus, which is way too violent and too explicit to show on TV. I probably shouldn't even be watching it because I'm probably not old enough. Um, you know, but uh, you, know, you look at some of the dramas, uh, Walking Dead, um, uh, the, the one with the advertisers, uh, <laughs> I've forgotten it, Mad Men. Uh, you know, uh, do, don't they have Netflix everywhere? No, they don't have Netflix everywhere. Um, I can say that for sure. Uh, they don't have it in Saudi Arabia, I tried. Uh, um, they, they don't have it in some European countries. Uh, they don't have it in Armenia, I know that for sure. Uh, Netflix is sort of slowly rolling itself out. Um, so, you know, Netflix, it, you know, these things like to say, the golden age, it's instantiating itself differently in different places. I don't think they have Netflix in Nigeria. I say I doubt it. I could be wrong. I mean, one of the things that I've discovered um, because I've been lucky enough to travel around the world is most things are available in most places or at least most urban places if you have the money for them. Uh, the problem is a lot of people don't have the money for them. Uh, scary movies equals the news. Yeah. <laughs> I don't watch scary movies. I just, I refuse to watch scary movies. I do watch the news, but I don't like the news, and I wish I didn't watch it. 
Uh, it's a golden age, um, a house of cards, oranges and black, these, these Netflix only shows, we have the cable only shows, and, and as a result, even the traditional networks are having to keep up. But it's not just that. I have a subscription to Major League Baseball online, uh, and there's spring training now, and I have my Blue Jays cap, and I love watching my baseball. This is, beyond, beyond a doubt, a golden age of content. And here's the other part. Most of it is free. Now, Netflix, okay, I'll admit, is not free. Netflix cost me all of $7 a month, which is virtually free. It's not quite free, but it's virtually free. It's way less than cable. Um, and, and as a result, a lot of people have given up on cable and they just watch Netflix because it's so close to free. YouTube, which has millions and millions and gazillions of, of videos, is free. Uh, stuff like TED is free. Uh, some of the content on iTunes is free. There's a huge pile of free content. I personally have 16,000 photos available, high quality photos, if I say so myself, available for anyone to use non-commercially for free online. Uh, you can get popcorn flicks. Is popcorn flicks free, Nelly? Maybe it is free. I've never heard of popcorn flicks. Yes. Oh, how about that? Um, so, there you go. <laughs> uh, so, there's free open educational resources, there are free lectures, there are free massive open online courses. <laughs> if you watch them as you drive on, on mobile. <laughs> Uh, let's not go there. Uh, I, you know, this, this whole driving distracted thing, I'm going to go there, is not unique to the internet. I still remember back, when would it be, uh, it was when I was living in Bridgeland, which means I was at the UFC, it'd be the early 1980s, having to get out of the way as a car drove by, and I'm serious, the guy was reading a book as he drove. Books balanced on the steering wheel. He's driving along, reading his books. So listen to Audible as you drive. Yeah, Audible is a pretty good source. I love podcasts. This thing is not about podcasts, but I love podcasts. One of the things that I listen to uh, are, are the old-time radio shows. In fact, just last night, I listened to an episode of, of Boston Blackie. One of my old favorites. Uh, Philip Marlowe, Sherlock Holmes, Sam Spade, John Smoke, uh, The Great Courses. That's also a good choice. The Great Courses. Am I able to click there from here? Yes, I am. So you're not going to see that, but The Great Courses. There you go. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that that existed. So, uh, okay. So there's a ton of free content. Music. Remember when everybody was talking about the death of music and how the internet was going to kill music? Well, look at this, right? Here's my, well, maybe you can't look at this. <laughs> no, you could, but it's, it's way too confusing. Um, I have tons of music on, on this thing. Right. Um, but it's not just that. I've got music by artists I never would have heard about prior to the internet. Um, artists like Kathleen Edwards, artists like, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to think of some of them here. I'll, I'll name a few. Nico Case, you probably never heard of Nico Case. Uh, but I have, and that's the point, right? Um, artists such as, uh, I would say, well, everyone's heard of Nelly Furtado, but who has heard of Amy Sky? Who has heard of, well, Joe Barber, somebody may have. Uh, Brandy Carlisle is one. Um, everybody's heard of Boston. Uh, but who has heard of Bruno Gaines? 
uh, T.O.T. Tubbs Silent, reasonably popular. Kelly Allen, probably not. Um, you know, and Lissy uh, is, is one. Luba from the 1980s is able to still be present and vital because there are all kinds of Luba music videos out there on, on the internet. Uh, Matt Dust. Justin Bieber would not exist as a Canadian musical icon without the internet, without YouTube. Um, or Mila Jovovich. Mila jo Jovovich starred um, in, in, uh, well, in several movies. Um, but she's also known as a musician, as a singer, um, which I would not know about except for YouTube. The point here is, uh, there are, I'm listening now to dozens and dozens and dozens of musicians, although not Justin Bieber, uh, <laughs> uh, that I would never have seen, never even heard of, had it not been for the internet. And, you know, and I'm able to explore whole internet genres, like K-pop. I don't know if you've ever heard of K-pop. Uh, that's Korean pop. Uh, what are they just completely outside my existence? Except now I can go onto the internet and uh, see bands like Girls' Generation. Uh, Girls' Generation uh, is, is a group uh, of nine singers from Korea. There you go. Uh, why is that interesting? Because it gives me a glimpse, a glimpse into their culture. Uh, Psy with Gangnam Style is another example of K-pop. Steven listens to music. Yes, I do. I listen to music a lot. It's important to me. It helps me form, formulate ideas, draw connections, see patterns. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's all part of the diversity of experience. So, that's the context. Now let's look at blogging. Blogging, my thesis goes, remains strong. And just, just as an aside, because I'll show you some, some statistics and things in a, in a moment, but it doesn't matter about the statistics. Because remember off the top of this talk, what I did is I showed you some photography through Flickr, through a blog, through Twitter, through Facebook. The, the blog was one part of that richer media environment. So it doesn't matter how many blogs there are, it doesn't matter how many blog posts there are, what matters is that blogging is a part of this ecosystem of content. And if this ecosystem of content is strong, then blogging is strong. But blogging is strong. Uh, here's the site wordpress.com slash activity. This is pretty cool because this is a real-time look at wordpress.com. Wordpress.com is a site that hosts WordPress blogs. It's one small fraction of, well, maybe a larger fraction of, of the, uh, of the uh, blogging environment as a whole. And we go and we look at this site and uh, we see posts constantly being posted, comments constantly being made, and even people liking on WordPress. The, the uh, chat area is off on a tangent about music, music for learning, and, and so on. I, I like music for going to sleep too, um, which isn't really learning. Um, but uh, I also music also is important to me for bicycling. I cycle quite a bit. You wouldn't know that to look at me, but I do, and I like to listen to music while I cycle. I also like to listen to baseball games, which I can listen to on my phone live as I'm out cycling in the country in the middle of nowhere. Couldn't do that even five years ago. Well. Ten years ago, you couldn't do that. So a bit more about uh, WordPress. Rumors of death greatly exaggerated. These these are uh, current statistics, uh, and you notice the number of posts is still going up. You notice uh, the number of readers is still going up. Now it's not going up exponentially anymore. 
uh, we're, we're still kind of linear. And, you know, frankly, from my perspective, it wouldn't even matter if, if the increase leveled off, you know, at, at 25 billion or 20 billion monthly page views. Who would care, right? <laughs> uh, that's still not dead. Uh, to my mind. So here we go. Losers produce, and this is WordPress.com, right? One medium sized fraction of blogging. Users produce 61.6 million new posts and 56.5 million new comments, not all of them span in a month. I think that's significant. Blogs have had a long history in education. Uh, Edu Blogs is another WordPress type site, still going strong, is now over 3 million blogs on its own. Uh, and Edu Blogs has been using blogs in all kinds of ways for learning. I like this diagram. Uh, I use, why do I use Grasshopper? I'll, I'll talk about Grasshopper in a little bit um, before the end of the talk, and I'll actually show you some of them. Try to remember not to scroll quickly, uh, and, and that'll explain Grasshopper to you. Um, so, but I wanted to point to this particular diagram because uh, you know, there's a lot of different uses for blogging in education. And it's just all listed them all, and but that would be boring. But now I can just look at them and see this in one kind of picture that shows the relation between the student, the teacher, the tools, and the different things that they can do with the tools, right? So uh, from the teacher's perspective, blogging supports both pedagogy and curriculum, which is important, but it also supports presence. And if we read people like Terry Anderson or Walter Archer or, or Randy Garrison, presence is one of the major factors supporting uh, learning online and learning at a distance. The teacher presence accounts for a significant aspect of learning. Um, also, teachers are able to use blogs or related media for guidance. Students employ blogs in the area of critical thinking, reflection. I mean, the whole idea of learning is not simply to practice something, but to reflect on that practice. Because you can practice things incorrectly for your entire life and never learn anything. But something like blogging, it doesn't have to be blogging, but something like blogging assists in reflection and in discussion with a community about that, uh, about that learning, about that practice. Um, knowledge creation individually or collectively, structure, design, etc. You get an idea here that blogging can be central to a range of learning experiences. Ever use Lino in collaborative learning? No, I haven't. Uh, Carol, uh, Carl saying, we sometimes forget that everything should be uh, connected. Absolutely. Um, and everything should be connected. That's why I didn't want to just present a list here. So we live now, and, and this is a, a business to business or marketing diagram, so you know there's an initial sort of E factor, but I wanted to put this in here because it shows that we're living in a world of multiple content types. Um, so if you look at the business-to-business -business content marketing tactic usage, um, keeping in mind, on the one hand, you're going to find marketing in these environments. On the other hand, it points to the diversity of media that's available today. And again, that points back to the fact that we're in a golden age. Uh, social media content, new newsletters, articles on a website, which is somewhat, for some reason, distinct from blogs, uh, in-person events, such as the one we're doing now. Uh, I think that would count as an in-person event, I know. Case studies, videos, illustrations, white papers, online presentations, that's definitely what we're doing now. Infographics, which I have no love for. Um, webinars, webcasts, research reports, microsites, and the list to go on. Those are the major kinds of media content. Um, 
I subscribe to eCont, eCampus News that covers what colleges are doing. Yeah, eCampus News isn't bad. It's I, I read it as well. Uh, I would not depend only on it, but I think that they're not bad. So we're getting toward the end of, of the slideshows here, but when I offered courses online in conjunction with my colleagues, people like uh, George Simmons and Dave Cormier and Rita Top and others, I've seen blogs as one part of an overall course mix. This is a diagram that was created by Dave Cormier. And you can see here, uh, you can see blogs mixed in with tweets. You can see the little birds that, that he drew. Uh, mixed in with videos. I think that's the things with the little trains or videos. With documents. With I don't know what the other things are. But as you can see, blogs form part of this ecosystem in which everything is connected together. I showed you part of that ecosystem off the top. I want to show you now another part of that ecosystem, uh, which is my own website and my own use of blogs. And I'm actually going to begin not with my own website. Uh, I'm going to begin, and not with the great courses, although that's lots of fun. Sorry, sorry about the scrolling here. I'm just going to, there we go. That'll make it a bit easier. Uh, I'm going to point you to Feedly. So, and it, Feedly always takes a few seconds to, to show up. Here we go. So, I use this. Uh, <laughs> so, and it doesn't look like much, but it really is. On the left hand side, these are all, I don't want to say they're all blogs, because that would be incorrect. It also includes corporate websites, it also includes newsletters, um, it also includes magazines and journals, but what they all have in common is that they offer RSS or Atom feeds. And it's RSS and Atom are content formats that are machine readable. And they were associated with the early days of blogging. And the idea was, when you created a blog, you would create a series of posts, maybe one post a day, say, or in some cases, three or four posts a day. But a post would be like an article in your blog. Some people actually call those blogs today, but they shouldn't. They should call it a blog post. And a blog is made up of a series of blog posts. And so, the idea was that they were represented in RSS, and then the RSS representation of the blog <coughs> was made available on their website so that an RSS reader, like we're looking at here, could go to the website, find information about new blog posts, and bring it back. So I have here a list of hundreds and hundreds of websites on the left hand side here and I'm moving my mouse here that should produce some, some giggling uh, this is a whole bunch of different blogs Clive on Learning, Don Tapscott, Illiterate by uh, Michael Feldstein and Phil Hill, LG Blogs, Harold Jarkey who lives down the road in, in Sackville, Will Richardson, John Spencer uh, I actually subscribe to more than a thousand blogs. I don't know how many it is, to be honest with it. Doesn't matter. The nice thing is, all of this content is available here. Now, now let me go to my website. So here's my website. Well, this isn't my website. This is the back end. This is what it looks like on the front. This is my home page. Here are some new posts that I've created. Uh, these were just created on, uh, well, today. <laughs> uh, and, and they show up on, on my uh, page. So, but if we look at the back end, this is the administration screen for my website. And the administration screen helps me manage everything. And one of the things that I have in the administration screen is a feed reader. So here's the list of feeds, 
Now, right now, I'm doing something a little bit different on my website. Uh, right now, the only foods I'm harvesting, the only RSS feeds I'm harvesting, are podcast feeds. And so, as you can see here, well, maybe you can't read the text, but so this list of uh, feeds, all of them have podcasts. All of them are connected to MP3 files. And what I do is I collect those and I organize them into different pages. And in this case, the podcast feeds all feed into something I call Ed Radio. So here's the administration page for Ed Radio. And I think this is the right one. Maybe. Uh, let's take a look at it. Let's view the page. So, yeah, it is. So, here's Ed Radio. It's a really very simple presentation. Because um, I'm, I'm, it's audio, right? So, it doesn't really matter if it's beautiful. And the idea here is now, here are some audio files that people have created. So, Huff Duffer, whatever that is. Uh, tech taint and, and so on, and they're, they're, here are the feeds that Ed Radio harvests. And then I also produce my own Ed Radio RSS feed. And sorry about the, uh, the scrolling here, but here's the RSS feed for Ed Radio. And if you subscribe to this in, uh, in your, uh, well, iTunes or whatever, or anything that reads RSS, you have to be reading or listening to this Ed Radio RSS podcast. So, <clears throat> also what I do is I create posts. So you remember you saw the Feedly thing there a few moments ago. Now, I'll take information from Feedly and I'll create a post using this form. So let's, let's do that. Um, Got way too many windows open because I was in the middle of something earlier today. So, oh, jeez. Sorry, I'm having trouble because uh, the, the stop screen button is right on top of where I want to be. Where's my feebly? Well, let's just pick an out. Here's a Journal of Education, Technology, and Society. So, here's, here's an article, Barriers and Enablers to the Very etc etc so I could just take that there's my <clears throat> oh it's still it's under here isn't it <laughs> my, my, my editing screen is only my stop screen button for was I Q so I'll have to I'll use this one this I'll do so I'll edit post and I can just paste it, etc., and update the record. And this is what I do to create OL daily. You might ask, you might ask, because a lot of people know, but what is OL daily? Well, OL daily is my newsletter. It comes out every day. Here's one from March the 5th. And as you can see, it consists of some articles, maybe a picture or so, and most importantly, a link back. And what do I link back to? You guessed it, blogs. And this is why I can say that we're still in the golden age of content and why blogs are still alive. Because I read dozens and dozens of blog posts every day talking about e-learning, learning technology, and related issues. Um, one more thing I want to show you while I'm still on here, just to show us this idea is not restricted to education. This is a site called Moncton Free Press. It's a site that I've created. Um, well, I wasn't expecting a big picture of Mars on it, but <laughs> there's a big picture of Mars. How about that? Um, so Moncton Free Press is a newspaper website and it's about uh, all kinds of news, events, etc. 
uh, related to Moncton, which is the city in which I live. I use Grasshopper to create Moncton Free Press. The neat thing about Moncton Free Press is I harvest many more feeds here. Uh, I won't scroll through them because it will just mess up your, your image, but dozens and dozens, like several hundred feeds. And here, with this website, I don't create the post by hand for the way I do for OL Daily. This is all automated. So with very little, almost no work on my own part, I'm able, able to produce a daily newspaper for the city of Moncton composed almost entirely of blogs and related blog content uh, by people writing about the city of Moncton or the province of New Brunswick, etc. We are a city of 140,000 people. We're not a big city, and yet I'm able to create what is really a very large and comprehensive newspaper out of the writings of people who create their own sort of stuff. Uh, I'm going to stop the screen, stop screen share. That takes us to about 10 to. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, it's just warning me again slowly, slowly. <laughs> so I'm going to stop here. Um, but uh, I'd love to take any comments or questions that you may have in the time we have remaining. We do have some time remaining. And Art's asking, all that was done in WordPress? No, no it was not. Um, the, uh, the stuff that you saw of my site and Moncton Free Press, that stuff that I did using Grasshopper, Grasshopper is the software that I authored. WordPress is getting better. And there are things like Feed Press and Buddy Press that allow some of this sort of stuff to be created. Uh, you look at some of the stuff that Jim Grimm has done and Alan Levine, they, they use WordPress almost exclusively. Uh, and, and they do a lot of similar things. Me, I use Grasshopper because, well, because I can program it and make it do what I want, want it to do. Uh, the MOOCs that we've run um, are also run using Grasshopper. Is Grasshopper a free download? Yes, it is. Uh, you can find it on source storage. Just one thing, though, Art, uh, you know, it's a hobby, right? It's not a commercial product. It's a research tool and a research platform. So it's got its quirks. Um, I've never commercialized it. I've never written it for commercial distribution. Uh, it's a thing that I use to test out ideas on. Uh, but it does work. Uh, it works really well. It's very fast. Uh, yes, I created it. Uh, it's very fast, and, and I really do like it. It is, it is open source. Um, so, uh, and so others can help out. Yeah, uh, they could. Uh, it's in Perl, um, and it's, I'm still, frankly, I'm still trying to understand GitHub. Um, I'd love to get it on GitHub. Uh, like I say, it's, it can be downloaded on SourceForge right now. Uh, also, um, uh, here's the website for it. So, again, uh, you know, it's not a commercial release, so, you know, it has its issues. It has, well, I shouldn't say issues, it has its quirks. It's, it's complex software with a lot of moving parts. Um, but yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Download it. Play with it. Um, people have downloaded it and made it work. Um, so it's not impossible to use. Other comments, questions? I'm watching the board. I see people typing. Nellie was typing, thank you, Maria. That was nice. Um, uh, this is something to try in class. You know, with, with the MOOCs, what we do is we have everybody create their own blog, or as many people who want to, they create their own blog. They give us all of their addresses, and then we aggregate all the feeds so that uh, we're able to see everybody's individual blog in the same environment. You could either use Feedly, as some people do, uh, I use Grasshopper, but you know we don't have to use Grasshopper. All you need is uh, an RSS aggregator. Uh, there's another one called the Old Reader, O L D Reader, that also works. 
Um, would be nice to try. Challenge, accept it. And that's my clock in the background. And anything else we got more on there? And lots of people typing it. They're speaking to each other. Where are my cats? That's a good question. Where are my cats? <laughs> I was preparing the slides earlier this afternoon. Alex kept jumping up on the table and I kept putting him down. He kept jumping up and I kept putting him down. So I think he's pouting somewhere. Are learners going to start paying for courses? You know, that's an excellent question. Um, and it depends on who you ask, right? Uh, Udacity started out for free, and then they started cha charging money. Um, TED Talks are still free, but you know, TED Talks are also kind of like marketing. Um, iTunes University is still free, but you know, you have to buy into the whole Apple thing, and who knows when that'll end. YouTube has just recently begun monetizing. Uh, charging access, charging subscription access to some videos. So, uh, who knows? I mean, that might start changing as well. But you know what? There is already tons of free material on any subject you care to name. Um, cooking videos, vegan black metal chef. is an example I use a lot. Uh, did that not take? There we go. Uh, because you, know, you can get really, really niche content online. So in five minutes, we're moving to our next live class. So, and I'm doing the little button here that says this class will end in five minutes. So this is the time if you have questions or I see Nellie's video is on again. Nellie, do you want to jump in and say things? I wanted to say thank you. It was oh, you're very so welcome. Fast. It went so fast. Um, and, and there's probably so much more um, you can tell us and share with us. Um, I want to thank you for uh, coming to the Spring Blog, blog Festival. It's SBF, and uh, it's the second annual. We had our first last year, uh, so this is the second one. And we're hoping to see you next time, next year, March 21st, 2016. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Stephen. I hope you're having good weather there in Moncton um, and that you'll have a nice um, summer as well. So thank you, everyone. I'll... Who's coming tomorrow? Who's coming tomorrow? More snow. More snow? More snow. Oh, you're kidding. I'm so sorry. Well, <laughs> if you like snow, it's a good thing, I guess. Um, yeah. But um, So have a good summer. I'm sure it's not going to snow in the summer um, in any case. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And we're looking forward to seeing you at the next session which is also by a Canadian who's now living in the States, and that's Anita. So you're welcome to join. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.